always clear. Um, the only exception is that we was concerned with the road, the width of the road. But you know, they feel that the emergency vehicles is wide enough for, for them to travel that road to get to these properties in case of emergency. Any further division of this property would have to um, apply for variance. Um, we were concerned that you know, with these new lots, as big as they are, that there will be a request for further divisions of that property and what impact it will have on that driveway. Um, but we did agree that you know we'll deal with that if the time comes. Um, so staff supports this request as, as presented for these three new lots. And the three new lots, there are actually four tracks listed. We um, count one of them as a parent, um, but okay. there, there's a total of four yeah, there lots. Are, the, the one piece is now going to be four. Yes. yes. Okay. Any other questions for Father at this time? Thank you very much. Is there anyone here in support of this application? Is somebody here? on behalf of the applicant. Okay. Is there anyone here in opposition to this request? Does anyone have questions about what is being requested? Okay, well, <laughs> uh, anybody got any feel for it? Have you got any questions? I I don't have a problem with it as long as it's enforceable, and Carmel has already addressed that, that if they come back and say, we're going to cut track one in 39 acres into four more tracks or five more tracks and try to access off the road, that in and of itself is going to trigger subdivision regulations, and they're going to have to improve that road, bring it up to county code and everything for they have to provide a county road? or they would have to block over there. So that lot right now doesn't have frontage on the paper. Yeah, they do a good job. Fair. We just don't know how long it's going to happen. Anybody got any feeling and make the emotion? I have a motion on the floor from Ms. Hobby second. to grant the request as presented. I have second from Ms. Portable. All in favor, please raise your hand. Four row unanimous. Thank you very much. Next case is VAR 2014-02, Bill Simon, on behalf of Valoc Flash Foods, Flash Foods, and Rock and Rodeo, 3480 and 3472 Beam of Road. Yes, sir. This is a new request for a variance. Um, we have the applicant here today. This is a similar request at your last meeting. Um, as a result of the last meeting, the applicant came back to the table and the staff and came up with a new development plan that in essence reduced their number of variances from four to one. Staff looked at that data and saw that as a great improvement. This was the previous request for variances. And we're only requesting one variance, which is a side yard, um, to the side yard setback for both the flash property and the rock and rodeo property. Um, they've gone from requesting the variance of uh, uh, six feet to only 10 feet, a 10 feet variance. So there will be a 10 foot setback for the proposed C store for Flash Foods and a 10 foot setback for the proposed, well, for the existing rock and rodeo. There will be 20 feet between the buildings. The staff looked at that and saw that as a great improvement and supports the variance request. 
questions asked, and this year um, he's representing both Flash Films, um, SOAR, as well as the Rock and Rodeo property owners. Uh, my question last time was about the Rock and Rodeo fire wall. You know, it makes me nervous to have a lot of people in there and then they have something bad happen. So, will the Rock and Rodeo have to have a firewall? A change to that building? The building inspections representative is here, and his response to that question is that they may have to raise that, that wall. And who can tell you that? Yes, ma'am, they will have to raise the wall. Okay. One hour already, but I've looked at the wall, basically a block wall. It's just the doors will have to have springs on and just double check the fire. Okay. And, and the Rock and Rodeo is okay with that? I just don't fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're fine. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay. Any other questions, discussions for the board at this time? Thank you. Is anyone here in support of this application? I decided if I see you're here, you would give us name and address, and if you want to add anything, if not, we'll ease off. Bill Sine, I'm not going to along the way. I really don't have anything to add to it other than these two buildings are not side by side, they're caddy cornered. And so the actual distance is only from corner to corner. A fire truck can get all the way around both buildings. So, other than that, that's all we got to add. Any other questions, discussions? Is anyone here in support of this application that has not spoken or would like to speak? Is anyone here in opposition to this request or has questions about what is being requested? Good question. Was there any contact from your office? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, discussions at this time? Flash Foods has worked round and around trying to get this to their satisfaction and our satisfaction, and we're down to one. <coughs> Can I entertain a motion? Some of this very to approve signing B. I have motion from Dr. Howell to cite to grant request as presented. Do I have a second? I have a second, Ms. Hobby. All in favor, please raise your hand. 4 0 unanimous. Good luck with Mr. Sides. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. As Carmella Show continues with application AAD 2014-01, J.R. Howell Estate, Howell Road, Valdosta, Georgia. Yes, sir. The next two requests are related. Um, that they're related and it's concerning to the J.R. Howell Estate, located off of Howell Road. The first request is an administrative appeal, whereas um, the state has challenged the decision of staff, and I'm going to attempt to explain this. It's very complicated and very technical, so we'll try to do as good of a job as we can to explain the request. Um, if you would take a look at the survey. The survey pretty much lays out all the state's property, and this is an attempt for them to sell their state by dividing the property. And they have challenged staff's um, interpretation of the code of, of lot by default, the term lot by default. If you look at tracts number one and tract number six, both these tracts are divided by the rail system. The applicants would like for us to count these two tracks as one and the same. I said that right. Um, staff has determined that the north side, the tracks on the north side of the railroads are independent of the tracks on the south side of the railroads, and they are considered lots by default. Um, although our term or the definition of lot by default which is a lot which was once whole but divided into parts through the acquisition of public property or construction of a public road. The applicants have stated that the railroad is not considered a public road and we do not per se 
have the term railroad system in our definition, so they feel there's room for a challenge there. Um, if they, if, if we were to look at these as one and the same lots, then they would not have to go through our rezoning process. Um, but if we look at them as being independent of one another, the lots on the north side of the rail system will not meet the land area requirements of the zoning district, which is five acres. So they will be required to rezone the north side, uh, the property on the north side of, of the railroad tracks. Um, so that's that's the gist of the administrative appeal. I do have the staff report here if he wants to add to uh, well, I wouldn't have to ask you any questions. Oh, I got, I got a lot of stuff to say. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, but it's just to have to go on. Sure. Right now. Yes. Um, if, if these two lots north of the railroad track are considered separate lots, and they have to go through rezoning because they're not large enough, mm -hmm. You'd be forced to rezone because they've got residences on them. I mean, they've got to be, they wouldn't fall into a grandfather? No, because the lot exists now. Uh, the division of this property is what's triggering the current requirements. Okay, so you'd have to, they couldn't find them to. Right, right now, there's one block of land even though the railroad goes between them. Right. I mean, if, if you draw it on the map, it looks like you've got a piece up here and a piece down here. Mm -hmm. But they are actually one in the same piece mm -hmm. with a corridor through. Right. And the, the requested zoning would, we would suggest to them RA zoning, which is residential agriculture, two and a half acre minimum. And so there wouldn't be a problem down the road with rezoning these two parcels north of the railroad track are at? I believe they will have staff support. Ultimately, the Board of Commissioners make the final decision in any rezoning request. But I do believe, and the station may be cut out, I believe we will support the request for rezoning RA, which will be another application and some applications. So that would be the only negative part of that, not counting on those two lots. That's correct. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Your question will be one of mine. Well, right now, the way they've got it drawn, they are creating potentially two tracks on the north side of the river. Yes. One, <laughs> one at 4.7. And one at 2.4. That's correct. And I, I'm assuming again because there are existing houses on at least one. I think both of them. When I wrote about it, I wasn't sure whether both houses were on the same piece or one piece. There are two. At this point, we would have to have a variance for the lot size. They can either readjust the line that separates the two right. so that that 2.4 would be at least two and a half. Right, that's where, that's where I was going with They may have to shift that line. The four, the, the four acre side is not a problem. They may have to give up a few feet. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, they're not asking for any probably any kind of relief because they've got a two and a half and a four plus. That's correct. What I don't know is if there's a house on the 4.7, it's not shown on the survey. I believe there is. There, there is. Is, okay. is, is the line drawn now? If, if, if I may, I might can, uh, Well, we're, that's, that's fine. We're flattening out order, but let's, let's try to listen to what we got to say. If you look, you you, think so? the, oh, I'm John Himes. Uh, I live out on the property. If you look, uh, you get. Can you see? Yeah. Uh, this is Ricky's property. This is going to be Gary's. But in between here is uh, yeah. Brittany's house. And that's already deeded to her and in a one acre lot. So we can't change any lines on this side or this side. 
That's what we're going to do. What does, all right, that just brings another can of worms. This is a whole different. The D that was created was down in the um, out in this area, out in this area, five acres is the minimum, and they created a lot by D, and it's an illegal lot of structure. All right, what is the remedy for that? Rezoning is one remedy. Um, Recording this plat would remedy that, because what the plat would do is it would show it as being combined with the rest of the property rather than the existing plat itself. So our hopes is that this plat also addresses this bridge. So at, at that point, if she she would do, well, first off, because the deed was not legal, was not recorded properly, or whatever handled the property. If they move the line, as long as the line doesn't go through an existing house, worst case scenario, they got two lots instead of three, and she's living on somebody else's land. And the, the, the only way to resolve that is to rezone it in some fashion to carve out a one acre parcel, which is going to create another headache because unless they carve out that one acre parcel out of the four acre side, then they're going to have two lots that are not going to meet the two and a half acre. We do have, Mr. Chairman, a way to address small lots in these areas, and that's through family title subdivision. Okay. We think that track one and track six, the northern pieces, if they qualify, because I believe this Brittany is a granddaughter of Mr. Howell, then you would be able to use family ties to avoid the rezoning and settle the estate on the top portion. The bottom portion has already used family ties. They've already used that exemption, but the top portion has not. So there is a way to avoid the rezoning, but the family ties is a one-time exemption, and they report it one time, it lets you subdivide property at these distances, but it has to be for certain individuals. And I think of Brittany's a granddaughter, I think that track one is a brother. So, so far we have some assurance that, you know, depending on the outcome of this case, they have family ties as a way to deal with this if they wanted to do that. Right, and if they deal with it in that fashion, and at some point in the future, somebody moves away, gets married, leaves, dies, and heirs try to liquidate now they don't open another can of worms because now they can't sell the land because of the family ties restriction. Well, once, you know, we don't chase family ties, you know, we, we chase it on the front end. But what they do beyond that point, a year later, two years later, they sell it to someone else. That's, you know. So far, the regulations are written on conveyance. Right. And as staff, we come together and said, look, we're going to try to certify that it's conveyed to the appropriate individual with just affidavits. But, you know, beyond that, we run the rabbit of what happens if we convey it to, you know, I convey it to my sister and then she sells it. Well, then you beat the system, you know, but the intent is there to try to help families. Right. So far, we can tell you that probably a large majority of the cases, we don't feel like there's been abuse of this. But well, the I, risk I is hunting. there to beat the system. I mean, it, it just exists. Well, I, I wasn't hunting a backdoor to abuse the system. I was hunting, okay, when you start doing this, now the person that you sold it to is bound yes, sir. by problems that they didn't create that they're inheriting. They are an inheriting, and then they turn around and come back to us or to the county in some fashion and say, help me. Yes, sir. So far, I mean, maybe you can stretch the interpretation of conveyance to just go forever, but so far we've just said conveyance is the initial conveyance and just left that as the enforcement. Okay. Can I ask yeah. my questions? Yeah. I got questions. Can I yeah. ask my questions now? Yes. Um, it says on here that this is Norfolk and Southern Railway right away. How is that right of way different than the pipeline right of way that comes through my parcel? The pipeline is, I believe, is more is an easement. Is it an easement or a right of way? It's an easement. It's an easement. Oh, it's an easement. That's the difference. Okay. And so you're thinking of this so the, the property that's um, immediately adjacent to me on my side of the street um, is owned by my neighbor, and then the road cuts through it. 
and then he owns a property on the other side of the street too. So you're saying that this railroad is like a road. So we imagine that this is a road cutting through their property. So these little pieces though have the definition of whatever, I mean it's not their fault that this, they got to be small in size that they're wedged between the road and the railroad. It's not their fault that it got to be this size. So why should we make them pay a penalty, if you will, to say that, well, that lot is too small. They didn't make it be that small. And that's, you know, that's the interpretation, and you yeah. all can the, look at it that way, you know. The way it exists now, beyond the one acre lot we have an issue with, we're okay with it existing the way it is. But when the family came to us and said, we want to do some things differently, that's where we had to get into the rezoning how do we accommodate for your lot size? Okay, well, I have, I, I have a question then also. It, I maybe have bad eyesight, but the part that's north of the railroad that says track one and it's 4.7 acres, and then there's a track one that's 6.8 acres. So that's all one big old piece in their mind. In, in their mind, that's one piece and it's um, 10 or 11 acres. They would like what staff to look at. They would look at an 11 piece. acres. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with track number six is 11 plus uh, something on the other side? Yeah? Nine, it's a total of 11. Nine acres plus nine, two. Nine plus two. Mm -hmm. nine, nine plus two. Okay. Um, Those are the only two. How, okay, so how do tracks three and four and two touch the road? That's going to be your next one. That's, that's the, next. the next request is an access variance, which is what they need for two, three, four, and five. So that's why there's okay, two. So I, all right. Okay. On track six, can you take the 9.12 acres and put it with 2.4 because she has that one acre? You mean on... Miss Brittany's one yeah, acre? Yeah, she's down there, that's her house. So it's not actually 2.4, is it? It's really 1.4. Our hope is that when they settle the estate, Miss Brittany will obtain that property and it will be one piece. That is our hope. Because that's what they're showing here, is for it to be one 2.4 acre piece. So our hope is that when they settle the estate with all these deeds, Miss Brittany's is combined in. She's going to get 2.4. That's our hope. No, I don't understand that. It's going to go from one acre to two. No, no, but it says that the track six is 2.4 plus 9.1. If you look at them as one. What do you think? That's right. Okay. And we want to look at our interpretation. Is so you're talking about one and two and then three and four and five and six and seven and eight. You're talking about that there's really eight tracks yes. here, not yes. six. That's right. And, and your concern is with track number um, six, as it were, that little 2.4 acre track. We, you know, the larger concern is sometimes in the county, this happens, where you have an I-75 that's built, you can buy the farm, one of the tracks might have road runs, one of them might not, because of the way the road is constructed. So when that happens, we as staff say, come on now, this is separate from this piece. This has developed rights, this has developed rights, but we treat them separately. We don't count the acreage across roads, et cetera, at one. Give each their rights, and that's what we're trying to say here is each piece has its own rights. You know, the railroad is there, and that's fine, but the northern pieces have their own rights, and so do the southern pieces. So, if we go along with what staff recommends, then the only thing they're going to need is just for us to approve the 20 foot easement going through. The other tracks, so that they'll all have some degree of frontage. Not only that, they will have to either rezone that northern portion or reconfigure that lot line so that they meet the minimum mandate requirement of the RA zoning district. Well, well, because they're talking about that this track on the top is going to be hooked to the track on the bottom. No, I'm thinking in different staff recommendations. Oh, okay. Take, take, take off this. Keep it separate. Yeah, if you need to be separated, you got two acres, uh, two parcels north of the railroad track and four parcels south of the track. 
that are independent of each other. They can be owned by the same person. Got, or okay, if you have six so it's like this trust. gentleman said, if you've got Miss Brittany sitting right there in the middle with one acre between these two slithers on the north side of the railroad, I don't see how you're going to meet a requirement for RA zoning. If you, with family ties, because that's oh, the way that's this right, will work, family with family ties, provided, you know, Miss Brittany is the granddaughter and then the brother, we have two brothers, one of the pieces has to be two and a half or five acres. Well, if they rezone, then track one meets the two and a half acre requirement. You can have a one acre and a 1.4 acre or a 2.4 acre other piece. That's where those exemptions come in. The commission basically say, we'll let you exempt from the lot size requirements for family one time for up to you know, five lots and certain other regulations. And we do that fairly regularly. You know, they do that, but it's a one time thing. So that's where if they rezone it, they would be. With a rezoning, this this could be done with family ties. Without a rezoning, they make one of those tracks five acres, they could be family ties right now. But right now, their proposal is 4.7, not five. So we need, for EA zoning, the current zoning, we need at least one track to be five acres. And they don't, they don't have it yet. So that's what they're saying. Let us try this appeal to make them count as one to deal with that issue rather than move property lines. Because ultimately, if this is, not approved, they're going to have to make a choice whether to rezone or shift the property lines around. And it sounds like they've done some homework about what these property lines are, so they're at least wanting to try this before they go through those negotiations. Thank you. And the, the nail that we we're supposed to be trying to hang our hat on is the railroad track is not really a road, and even though the strict interpretation reading of the, the regulation, if we relax it and say that this is, that it can be interpreted the other way, at that point they get what they need to, in order to do slightly over two acres and slightly over four acres on the north side and four individual lots to the four. Right. And at that point, all we're dealing with is the, right. the next variance, which is the access to get in there. <coughs> there is a yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Our code has built in Commissioner Chairman Strickland remembers this where it used to be very hard to get variance for lots of incredibly hard. And we put language in there that opened it up to allow for variances for much more than those. Part of this is what you're dealing with where because we have such a liberal variance policy where so much of the code is able under your authority, we have problems like this that's really complex but ultimately still under your decision if you wanted to go that route. Carmela, okay. In terms of the history of this property, when was this railroad put railroad tracks put in? Constructed in what year? I, I can't answer that. What year was that property purchased by this original owner? 
they ultimately subdivided it and then they sold it to the same to another group, but the cost was one and two. Mm -hmm. And they took that into consideration for the value of that that land thus separating it. So all along, I mean my argument is the same as the as the, as the these folks that uh, the railroad is like a road. It separates these two parcels and they're separated. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, they're not connected. I mean, they're, they're, whoever owned the land was paid for that land by the railroad or whomever, by the state or whatever. So they no longer, they can't connect it because they don't own it. They don't own the land. It's just like owning the land on both sides of the That is our, oh, we believe the intent is there to say that, but it does not say <coughs> the vote, so they had a legitimate, they have a legitimate point. Sure, at some point it's been litigated. Georgia Supreme Court, Georgia Court of Appeals, and uh, that issue's been litigated. Well, let's, let's not delve into it quite that deep. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I'm just. Okay, any other questions, any discussion? <clears throat> I think the gist of it is that they're trying to keep it in the family, they're trying to maintain it. Basically, the status quo. So we, you know, we want to honor that. We, we do feel families are important, so we, we want to honor that. And our recommendation was for approval on the next variance, but on this one, we just and they we knew that going in. They did going in. You know, we had positions as what was going to be it. So. Well, it's 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 hard to recommend approval of an appeal of administrative decision because you're saying hey we we want you to appeal what I've always told you you can't do it. Well and the other thing is by having them be right. separate, they do, like Jason said, have their individual rights on the property then. That property has its own rights because it's an independent piece. Yes. Okay. Any, any other discussions? What's the question? The question is, are we going to strictly interpret the decision that has been made that they have to they have to go through all these hoops and rezone it and everything because the railroad is there, or are we going to say there's enough fuzz in the language that in this case we will override it because it is all in fact. And I, you know, again, I hold the objective a bit personally, not as chairman, but if it was a situation that you had parties into it for financial gain, development, or something like that, then I would probably lean a lot heavier toward the table. You know, the can, rules are the rules, everybody needs to play can, by the rules. Can room. we hear from the family next? Well, can we hear from the family next? I got some questions for them. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were about to call the motion. I thought you were about to call the motion. I thought he was, but he isn't called for it against well, you. Well, I know. In, a, in, a, in, in an appeal of an administrative decision, it is primarily the board with staff, not so much listening to public here. It, it's different than a variable. Okay. I, I do have a question for them. Okay. Now, if, I think we're temporarily through with y'all for a second. Okay, now, if someone would please, from the family, give us your name and address for the record. Uh, John Himes, I live at 3148 Howard Road, which is on the property. I have just uh, sort of an important question. Tract number one, which is 4.7 acres on the north of the railroad and uh, six point something on the south of the railroad. After this, that's going to be owned by person number one. One yes, person is going to own both of those. Yes, ma'am. John Robertson. And yeah. on track number six, the 2.4 acres and the um, 9.1 acres, that's going to be owned by person number six. Yes, ma'am. That would be uh, Gary Howe, and he is also the son of John Robert Howe. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is also, uh, this is family land, it has been and will be. Uh, I was the last person to live out, move out there and I moved in 2005. We're all on the property, we're all using it together and that's what we plan to do. 
Any other questions or discussion? I, well, I did have actually another question. When I looked at this map, and saw sort of these sort of square, but sort of crazy shapes, I wondered why did you divide it? Like this one that's sort of a Z-shaped thing. And why did this poor person get this? Like, why is this shape like this? Is there something about the, the terrain that makes that? No, the, the best I can explain is there's a field here that they run in, so it hasn't really moved out there to move around the edges. Now that it's being divided up, we have a crater here and a crater here, and uh, to get it all in there, that's the way it is. That's that was easy. We had to it down the lines without doing a lot of shifts, and we worked on it. So, because so, like, I was thinking, you know, well, why didn't why did one person take one, two, three, four? Why didn't you take nice and Because of the way we live. Well, I wondered about that. that yeah. I mean, yeah. I could oh, see that. that. I could see that. that. Uh, so, so poor person number one would have a home all the swamp. And number two would have the edge of the swamp and the field, and number three would have all field, and you'd want to have some varieties. That would be sort of if, if I could, uh, Robbie now lives here. Uh, this is Gail's trailer. This is Gail's son's trailer. Uh, this is where I live, and this is where Gary lives. And Ricky wanted his combined up, and this is going to uh, a grandson. And that's the way, I mean, we put a lot of thought into that and okay. a lot of uh, okay, so I, I have the same picture of the property that I live on that you divided up in a way that thought somebody might think, what did they do that for? There's some physical feature that you were after to do this. Yeah, basically okay. it just came down to, uh, and the reason we're asking for the variance, there's only one crossing of the road. Right. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Is anyone else here in support of this application? Or is this request for the Okay. Can I do it? Opposition. No. 